but I want to tell you about what happened to me on my way downtown. First of all, I thought I'd walk, because walking is fun. And one of the nice things about living in a city like San Francisco is that you can walk almost anywhere. It's not like New York or Los Angeles, where it would just be absurd. Even if you walked all day, you'd never get sometimes to the place where you want to go, because it's just too far. Here, within the limits of San Francisco, I guess you can go... What's, what is actually the furthest straight line you could walk inside San Francisco? What would it be? From Daly City to Fisherman's Wharf, maybe? About the longest you could do? Well, you could do that, what, in, in half a day, easily, couldn't you? If you walk fairly fast. Not many people have, but I mean, you could. Uh, and, and usually you don't have to walk that far. Wherever you are, wherever your car breaks down, wherever you're stranded, um, usually it's not more than two or three hours walk at the, at the outside uh, back home or wherever you want to go. And in this case, to walk downtown from here, from the Haight-Ashbury, is really only a matter of uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Fairly, fairly nice walk. And maybe even less than, I, I don't know, I, I really wasn't in that much of a hurry. As you'll see, things happen on the way, and I finally finished up not even walking. Because, uh, besides the fact that we do have uh, a wonderful walking town, we also have a nice bus town. And this is something that I'm not used to. Uh, I've lived in uh, Los Angeles quite a while, and there you come, become to be very dependent on your automobile. And you, you almost discard the idea of taking a bus, except as a very last resort, because you don't know what the schedules are, and they're very infrequent, and the fares are high, and... Uh, uh, there will be many changes to make, and it's just a very complicated business. Maybe it isn't really that bad, but that's the way most people seem to think, and I certainly am one of them. But here, and here in San Francisco, you see, I've still got the same sort of prejudice, only I'm very gradually growing out of it. I'm gradually beginning to realize that not only is this a walker's paradise, this is a city with one of the best transportation systems, public transportation systems, that I've ever encountered. You can practically step out of one bus into another bus uh, any time of the day and get anywhere you want to get uh, in a few minutes with not much effort. So, um, walking along Haight Street in the direction of downtown, I decided there were so many buses around, it just seems absurd not at least to give them a chance to carry me part of the way just for the fun of being on a bus. As I say, this is one of those days where just everything was fun. So I stepped onto the bus, and there started adventure number three, or whatever. Uh, because uh, the bus driver, for some crazy reason, was smiling. <laughs> it was one of those days when even the bus drivers were happy. But uh, um, that wasn't uh, uh, too important, because after all, you're not even supposed to talk to the bus driver. There's a big sign up saying, uh, 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 they'll be glad to give you directions, but... Uh, uh, what does it say? Unnecessary conversation is uh, inadvisable for your safety or something. So I don't make a practice of talking with bus drivers. Uh, but there was a fellow passenger just getting on in front of me. And it was a, a, uh, a girl um, who had um, a pair of these funny colored glasses. And I didn't notice what she was wearing. I never do notice these things. But I did notice she was carrying a bunch of flowers, daisies or pansies or something, white petals anyway, and uh, yellow in the middle. And uh, as I was uh, asking the bus driver if he went where I wanted to go, the girl said, Would you, can I give you uh, one of these uh, flowers she offered me? And this started me off. People are always offering me flowers. And I've got to, it's come to the point now where I have a standard reply. I say, you can't give it to me because it's mine already. That sort of, that sort of uh, uh, takes some people back, but, but she had just insisted on, on uh, giving it to me, putting it into my hand. I said, oh, you don't want it. Oh, I see. What you want to do? You want me to hold it in my hand. Is that it? And she said, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm giving them away, and I, I'd like you to hold it in your hand. And so I said, okay, if it makes you happy, I'll hold it in my hand. But it's just the same as if you were holding it in your hand, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, it's, it's not any more mine once it's held in my hand than it was yours in your hand. Um, but I said, well, I was in a really generous mood today. I said, well, look, uh, uh, can I at least thank you by paying your, your bus fare? And she said, oh, yeah, it's very, very nice of you. So I, I paid her bus fare, and we sat down together on this thing rolling towards downtown. And it turned out that she was not just going towards downtown. She was on her way to that city that we just mentioned, um, Los Angeles. She said, uh, I'm hitchhiking to Los Angeles. And I looked at her, and she was quite young, and she was obviously alone. And I became parental. All of a sudden, I, I, uh, I, suddenly, I suddenly felt a little bit uh, that somebody ought to say to her, uh, are you sure you'll be safe? 
I didn't say it in quite that way. I said, uh, well, don't feel that you have to take the first ride you get. Uh, and I think she understood what I meant. Uh, and I also advised her what I often, what I always advise people that are hitchhiking, because I've done a lot of it myself. That is to carry a sign giving as specifically as possible your destination. Uh, L.A. in this case would be very nice, because that separates you from all the other hitchhikers, and it makes you look like a person who's going somewhere, not just an idle tramp or a vagabond or a escapee from <laughs> the nearest uh, prison. So she said, okay. And then she started talking about water buffaloes. Why on earth she was concerned about... Is that something that's going around the neighborhood now? Is anybody else talking about water? She was very concerned about the world water buffalo population. She said they're becoming extinct. And uh, I told her that, to my knowledge, uh, there are plenty of water buffaloes around. I've seen them all over. I told her how many I saw in Hong Kong, just in a, in a few miles area. And she said, oh, no, they're really dying out. And I, 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 couldn't believe, I, I wasn't sure whether she was putting me on or whether she was really concerned about water buffaloes or whether this was something symbolic to her, <laughs> a deeper, darker meaning that I could penetrate. Uh, but I took her at face value and, and um, tried to uh, reassure her that uh, the water buffaloes of the world were... Um, getting along okay. And she left the bus, and um, that was uh, the last I saw of her.